Thank you very much, uh, Cameron, and uh, it is a pleasure here to be day uh, to, to be here today with uh, Rob Oakshot. Uh, just as well you organised this uh, conference on a Friday in a sitting week; otherwise, neither of us would have been able to be here because of the pairing arrangement. But uh, nevertheless, we are here, and it's an important opportunity. It's good to be back in uh, Port Macquarie as well. I've been here on many occasions talking about regional development, so to be here today actually being able to initiate some action in relation to it is pretty exciting uh, indeed. It's a great area flying in this morning. I was uh, struck by how beautiful it is. So it's like so many parts of the country, has its own diversity, has its own brand, but it needs to work out itself how best to promote that. And I'm delighted to uh, also uh, be here on behalf of the federal government, of course, but in the capacity of a conference organised by the Regional Development Australia Committee uh, for the Mid-North Coast. And uh, with Elizabeth uh, McGregor uh, and her team, um, I'm sure that they are responding to Andrew's earlier call for that collective uh, leadership because that is so vital in, um, in taking us uh, forward. I'll talk about the role of the RDAs uh, in a minute, but if I can go to uh, my first uh, slide, because today's theme is about strategic um, regional leadership. It, leadership itself does take hard work, it does take courage, but it is about capitalising on the opportunity, but it's only the locals that know best what that opportunity is. From my point of view, the opportunity presented by the agreement that we have struck with uh, the two independents, Rob being one of them, I think gives us a once in a lifetime opportunity to entrench regionalism in the form of governance in this country. What we're talking about is not only the resources that'll be available, but also a new framework in which to get that coordination and that ability to help you <coughs> across the different portfolio streams. It is fundamentally a policy and a framework that empowers local communities because uh, one size doesn't fit all. I think um, we've agreed to commit uh, important new resources to uh, this to give effect to the, uh, the framework. But in empowering local communities, I think the importance of understanding this has been drawn from my experience as well over 20 years in um, political life. In the previous portfolios of primary industry, I saw the opportunity of engaging stakeholders to come up with more creative solutions, interestingly around land and natural resource management of water management. When I was employment minister and established the area consultative committee structure, and I see John Ross in the audience uh, here today, I worked closely with John in those days to not just use the resources of government in terms of employment initiatives, because what's the point of putting incentives up and offering training programs if they don't respond to your needs? And so getting that match between the supply and demand was absolutely critical. But then finding creative ways in which we could promote the program, and John afterwards, I'm sure, will be able to tell you about the success that we had in that regard. Interestingly enough, in the time that I had the employment education portfolio back recently, I was also convinced, looking at a lot of those building the education uh, revolution programs, the ones that there are no complaints about, and bear in mind the complaints constitute 3% of the total. They might be on every front page of the Australian from day to day, but the complaints themselves are 3% of the total. The ones that are the successful ones, the more successful ones, is when there's been local engagement. Local engagement by the school communities uh, in them. So one size doesn't fit all. The second uh, slide that I just want to uh, go to goes to this question of, I think, the twin challenge that uh, we need to confront. The first is that 
geography does define our diversity. It plays different cards to different regions. It either gives them great access to water or, and, and, and those that have had it have become too reliant on it and that's why we've got a Murray-Darling Basin uh, situation as, as we have. But often what the media commentators who too readily criticise regional development and regional programs as just pork barrelling or why don't they get on with it and do it themselves, they don't get the, d the dimension of geography defining what constitutes different regions. But at the same time, as it's important for us to get people to understand that better, it's important for regions themselves to understand that their future can only be secured if they grow, if they develop an economic growth model. Now, I've listed up there a whole range of things, the different uh, um, regions that are represented here today will know in various ways how each of those um, interact and uh, constitute themselves. But the point is, I don't think regional development is about us trying to define lines. I think it is about understanding that regions are communities of interest that are focused on achieving sustainable development, economic diversity and economic growth is critical to that. The next one is the resources that, the new resources that are now available in terms of the um, government and the offering and the agreement, uh, quite frankly, uh, that has been struck. It's the first of those is the $1.8 billion health and hospitals priority regional round, the recognition that health outcomes are worse in regional Australia than capital cities. It's about bridging the gap. Those guidelines are out now. Look um, to them, I'm sure that many of you have. To come out next year for application in the 11-12 financial year is $500 million from the Education, Infra Education Investment Fund. Again, important opportunity for regional education, as well as the requirement to ensure that 30%, 32% of all new and existing education initiatives have to be in invested in regions. So for education, there's a proportionality argument. There's 800 million over five years, so 600 in the forward estimates for a new priority regional infrastructure fund. There's $6 billion for the re a regional infrastructure fund out of the mining tax. Two billion of it is allocated to Queensland, two billion to WA. The other two billion, interestingly enough, is carved into two components. 573 million, which is available for initiatives that come through RDAs. The residual of that two billion dollars has to be spent in the non-two nominated states, as I understand it, but in states that pay, will pay the mining tax. So New South Wales itself should be an important recipient of that component. There, of course, is the rollout of the national broadband network and the prioritisation that we're saying it needs to give to the, regional, to the regions. I urge you, too, to look at the Auslink programs, where they are, where you want them to go because there is money in the forward estimates uh, for them and also to Infrastructure Australia which is an independent uh, body of government but which has to invest the monies from the future fund and that is whilst I say it's independent they have to do it on cost benefit analysis it also has to have a component in it, and I was interested in this when I was in, argued for it when I was Trade Minister, infrastructure that improves the competitiveness of the, uh, the nation. So again, understand the opportunity that's available in the context of those funds um, as well. So there has been a massive increase in the, uh, in the funds. I should point out, and I'll urge you to go to the website in relation to this, that these are, in essence, new monies. But there are existing programs 
within all the key major portfolios, health, education, etc., that have a regional focus. You can find that list in terms of the website, but have a look at that in terms of the suite of proposals potentially that are available. But what we've got, what I would like you to do in the context of this is not just look at the opportunity one by one, but how you can join the dots in terms of realising your strategic uh, vision. Um, because the challenge, quite frankly, is about linking this up. If I can give you just a, an example, I don't want this to be prescriptive, but if I can have the next one, thanks. One way that I think you need to look at this